Okay. Good morning, teacher and everyone. Good morning. And good morning as well to all our online viewers who's joining with us through online on our Facebook page, Christian Gospel Tagalana. And to everyone who's going or about to go here in this church, we welcome you. And we pray that you come here or that you'll arrive here safe and sound by the grace of God. And so before we start this service, may I remind all of us that how heavy or how hard our life may be or may become. We all know that God is always there and we all know that God knows what we're struggling with, what, what we're going through. And God knows that even our deepest struggles in life He's just there waiting to call Him. Waiting for us to call Him. And so I pray that this morning we've come to the presence of our God thinking that this is not about ourselves, it is about Him and for His glory alone. And so, may we be reminded from by this song, which entitles The Heart of Worship, that even if all the music fades, even if sometimes we, we, we don't understand what's happening in our lives, even this week that we're going through a really heavy heart. But notice, my brothers and sisters, that God is alive. And God is still working in our lives. He's working through you and He's going to use you. He's going to use us to reach out to the lost and not just the lost brothers and sisters but to our co-brothers and sisters in Christ who barely needs our help, who really needs our encouragement, who really needs our presence. Yes, you. 
the Lord you give you as you behold your goodness, as you behold your holiness.
Mayong buntag na itong tanan. Good morning! Kumusta? God is good? And all the time? Na ko ay may slow sa college. Mangumusta ganyan siya na ang permit. Every time mo sulod mo, kumusta ako ganyan niya permit. Niya, ingon siya. When he asked us, Kumusta mo? How are you today? Ang nindot ko nung ito ba? Better than yesterday. Di ba? Is it true that our lives get better every day? Amen? Tungod kay ang Diyos maayo tayo. Now, we will be uh, continuing our study in the book of Corinthians. O nga nata sa Corinthians chapter 9 verses 7 and 8. O ang ato ang uluhan is this is just a continuation of our last Sunday's message. So, continuation ng Ibiglesia sa ito ang pagmihaging uh, message by Pastor Bob to the Word of God. So, if you have your Bible with you and we have here in our slides, Corinthians chapter 9 verses 7 and 8. Ang pulong sa Diyos na ngayon, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or under under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency and all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Ang ginoo ng panalangin ng daan sa iyo. Now, before we continue, let's have first our recap. The last Sunday's message. Last Sunday, we were talking of the model of Macedonia in giving. That giving is an act of grace that they were able to give because they were given the grace of God first. Then, next is that the model of the Corinthian that it is a generous way. Pagka mang hinatagon o kusakin ikang gasa. And pasulbong focus in verse 6 sa iyahang pagtukon o pagtutlo ka na ito nagfocus Dere sa versikulo 6. Nagingo ng verse 6. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now, let us understand that Corinth is equated as a center of trade and industry. Atong sabdol nga ang Corinto na nabutang sa lugar diin mao ang sentro sa industry o trade but pasabot o sa tagbilaran sa buhol mo ni tagbilaran ang mao lugar na Corinto na mao siya ang sentro of trade that's why if you look at people from other municipalities ang tagbilaran yun, ang suwayanan na adiri ang mga malls, na adiri ang mga establishments. Tungkol ka ni kini mo ang center of trade sa buhol. When we talk of Visayas, we can think of Cebu. Di ba? And we, if we think of Mindanao, we can think of Davao. And kung mag sa tag, di ba Pilipinas, we have Luzon, Manila, di ba? So, ugmao na ang lugar sa Corinto. And if we think of them, they are in the middle class people. Buot mo sa buot mga datong ni. That's why kapag tayo tak. Every time natay mga, when we talk of kanang, may mga calamity, di na kayo pa makadawat sa mga relief good. Kaya nga naman, Diri sa ato ay paagi ang mga rinigod kaya kita ang mga hatag. 
That's the nature of body nature kung naata sa signal of trade. Dato mo lang tayo ilaran, kaman tayo na ang mga istorya. Ito ang kaya naata sa signal of trade. So, ang Paul is talking here that we should give in proportion to how God bless them. Kawantay ta na ang ikumpara o ang niunang dihatag ni Pablo na example sa paghatag is the Macedonia Church. Referring to the three churches, Berea, Thessalonica, and in Philippi. O kini sila mga pupri. Bot pa sa bot, gamay ra ang ilahang mahatag. Kaya pupri man sila. Diba? They, they came out of their poverty. The Macedonian churches. Pero kinik mga taga Corinto, they are able to give. They have. Naa sila. Kaya naa ni sila sa center of trade na lugar. Mga dako na yung mga tawa na. That's why ni Ingon si Pablo kinsa tong muhatag sparingly muanisan sparingly. Kung kinsa tong mo tanong o dinaghan Muhani sa o binaghan. Paul is expecting to the Corinthians that they will give more because God bless them more. Di ba? In proportion it. God bless them more and Paul is telling them that Paul is expecting them to give more. Tumot kayo pa lang hinan sila at daghan sa Diyos. That is in proportion. The the Macedonian church gave, I believe, gamay rang ilang dihatan to mo kay. They gave out of their poverty. They gave to mo sa ilahan kap pinasikat sa ilahan ng buhon. But the good thing here, sa pagnaagi pa nato ng mga pagtuol, the amount in our giving. It's not the measure, man. Dili kini maoy sukbanan ng dawa ng kini sa Jus. Look at the widow, tanawa ng poor widow, na giniksapol ni Jesus Christ. She just gave three, a two, dinari. Gamay ka ayo, sintapo sa na sa tuwa. Pero kung sa may pagtana ni Jesus Christ sa iyang mga tinunan. To give more, they will know. Now, despite of this, that Paul is expecting that the Corinthians will give more because God bless them more. Naghatag yapon si Pablo kay Lens nila. Kung sa ang paghatag, what should be their way? How to give? Based sa grasya ng lihatag sa Diyos. Kato nila. This is the guideline of their giving. In verse seven, niyong sila, niyong si Pablo. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Do you know? Each one. It is expected that we, all Christians, should participate. In giving, it's one, and it is individual. Individual ang paghatag. Dili kini tungod kay giingnan kaniya. Dili kini tungod kay adunay mga nitulod ni mo na rason. Kaban tayo? Ato mga bata ko ipaan hindi rin. No. Hatag na ito. But it's not bad. It's our way of teaching them to give. But later, kung sa may nihiskutan yun ni Pablo Ani, ningun siya sa verse 7, each one must give as he has decided in his heart. The word decided. Now, we will be seeing a lot of Greek word this morning. Yes. Kay Aaron Uh, mas masabda na to. We will really get the meaning and the intention of the author as we take the 
meaning from its original word. The word decided is from Greek word, pero pasensya ay lang ko na hindi na ako kayo mahiluwas ng mga word ng Greek. It is from Greek word proi, proi, proier, yo, which means to propose, to choose for oneself before another thing. Buot pa sa buot, ikaw yung mismo. Nagpili sa imong kaugalingon before another thing. Kaya nang walay ni tulon, di mo, uy, hatag, uy, lukoy na ba ito siya kaayo? Di li, kung mo ay nakatulon, di mo, kung okay, nilisayad ka sa imong kaugalingon. Wala bitaw naka, naka laing rason na nakatulon sa imuha sa paghatag. The intentions are pure, which is to really give according to how God bless you and nothing more. Walang ilain ng tulon nato sa paghatag. It is not manipulated by someone else or by some reason. It is you who choose to give. Gikang giyon sa imong kasing-kasing sa lahat ng translation ni proposes proposes in his heart. Kaya naman, because it could be that you will give sa rason nga maybe you want to be recognized. Maybe because so that people will know that you are a giver person. Look at the example of Jesus sa uh, atong poor widow and the rich man. Di ba? Just to be recognized. And it should not be the reason why we need to give. But it should be from our heart decision. Decide decision sa atong kasing kasing. That's why kung dinig na makat-recognize, manglugod, kabantay na ng mga eskwilahan in schools here in Philippines just for our uh, brother to know. In schools here in Philippines, their gates are named after the one who donated the gate. Kabantay tana ng name sa just for them to be recognized. But I'm not saying that uh, it, it is bad. Kaya nihatag yun sila. But the intentions ba? The intentions why we should keep is because that is one of our hearts this decision. Tungkol kay mo kini ang gisulti sa itong kasing-kasing. Dili tungkol kay na manipula ka sa lain o nagkalain-lain ng mga rasong na tumihatag ka. For example, during the time of law, sa panahon sa balaon, kung sa ilang dibuhat sa ilahang maghatag, they gave because they want to be blessed more. Di ba? Sa unang mga panahon, we call manakay treated o kablihan ko ang damuanan sa langit. Di ba? That is our reason to give. Pero that should not be. We should give because we were given already. Di ba? Lahit na ng idea na nihatag ka kay anong hatagan. Pero nihatag ka kay nihatagan ka. Mas maayo. Di ba? This should have, this is how we should give. We must give as what our heart decided. Kung kung sa'yo, gisulti sa itong kasing-kasi. Not manipulated or coerced by some people or mga istorya-istorya. Kung di, baong yun di ang gisulti sa itong ang kasing-kasi. Now, kung ato po ng malihon, our giving reveals the purposes in our heart. Ang atong paghatag, mo-reveal mo niya siya sa ato ang 
kung kung sa'yo nasa kumasing kasi. Kay, again, it is proportionate, it should be proportionate in ang isa itong paghatag. If God bless you more, then Paul is telling us to give more. That's why, if you look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, may nung siya niya, For where your treasure is, there your heart may be also. Asa ganin pa imon ang ato ang kaptangan, na po di ang ato kasing kasing. Kung sa may daghan ng ato ang asa man ang daghan ng gitaig ng sa ato ang kaptangan. Naaba sa ato ang pagtabang sa mga tao na naminhangal, then that reveals the purposes of your heart. Next nga guideline, it should not be reluctant. And the word reluctant is from Greek word lope, which means pain of body or mind, grief, sorrow, and regret. What do you mean? It should not be that we don't want to be able to do it because of the Muhatag ta na hindi natin ikasubok sa atong paghatag. Siya ang mga uwi. Mapalik naman ang taktong kuwan ba? So, ano niya? Di ba? Dili nga na. Kung dili, it should not be reluctant. Wala tayo kasakit sa itong hunahuna o kasing-kasing sa panahon sa itong paghatag. It should be freely given. It should be given with the intention to really really to help. Next, not under compulsion. Should not be under compulsion. And the word compulsion is from Greek word angake. Anake. Which means necessity, distress, or force. Wala akong binigun. Kaganina. Nga wala eh. Lagi nagtulod ni mo ba? Nanumuhatag ka? Coming really from you, from your heart, that's why you give. Wala ang gila. Hindi mo naman si pastor nga, inahang lang tamuhatag, kahatag na. Dili. Kung dili tumot kay, wala yung nagtulod ni mo mo first in order for you to give. Ang Diyos, God doesn't want us to give only, but He wants us to give happily. Kanang walay nag tulog yun nato, walay mga force, out of necessity. The word necessity in English meaning, it is a fact of being required. You require ka sa paghatag, and that is what happened in the law, sa panahon, sa balaon. You require sila sa paghatag. But Paul is Telling us this grace-based giving that we should give, not under compulsion, not manipulated by someone else. Kanang buwi kayo tu, sinatanda. But really from our heart, that's why we give. And the good thing here is, and this is why we should give this way. Because God loves the children of the Lord. Ang Diyos na higugma sa malipayo na naghatag. Ingo ng verse 8. Each one must give as he has decided in his side, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves the children of the Lord. Na higugma ang Diyos sa malipayo na now, what is this cheerful means? It is from Greek word hilaros, which means joyous, mercy. Now, usahay simple yung word na niya. Pero this hilaros, if you sa inyo ang pagtumog ani, o sa may English word niya inyo ang ma ma makuwad dahil ani. Hilarious, right? Hilarious. 
Og ang meaning sa word niya, hilarious, means extremely amusing and causing a lot of laughter. No, this is not just a simple joy in giving. Dili na ni siya, kanang, ano lang, sabang, okay lang, okay lang kung mamuhatag, okay lang sa, ano ba? Dili na simple na kalipay sa paghatag. This is something, kung dalawa ni mga word na hilaros, kanang yung kasadya, kanang mubahakak yun sa kalipay. I'm not saying, inighatag ninyo, inignite, nanginahanggan, ha ha ha, mga natang mga tag, no. But, your heart is really happy giving. Mukha niya ang isulti sa Diyos, sa pulong sa Diyos. Kung nalimalipay ang Diyos sa tao na naghatag ng malipayon. That's why Paul is giving us these guidelines in basing on the grace of God base sa grasya sa Diyos. And now, atong tanahon ang upat kaol sa paghatag. Mo na ang time na makaimungtan. Sana all. Sana all. Upat kaol sa paghatag. For all in giving. Lingon siya sa verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that all sufficiency and all things at all times you may abound in every the word. Na yung upat kaol na itong tanawan. First, all grace abound to you. Now, the word abound is from Greek word periseo which means exceed in ordinary overflow. Now, natin yung tawag ka ng mga ka ng hyper grace kita mga katunduanan where tinuod nga hyper ang grace nyo. It will exceed in ordinary. Just that dinita parehas atong uh, grupo katong hyper grace ng mga group na they preach prosperity gospel. Pero ang ato ba is the true gospel which is the grace of God na it's really abundant. It's really abundant. It is, it exceed the ordinary. Mula mo pa ni siya sa ordinaryo. Kung ba yan, grace niya sa Diyos. And kung ang grace niya sa Diyos mo abound din na ito, I believe it is abundant. Amen? Every day, God is providing our needs. And we can really tell that it, it abounds. The grace, the blessing of God is really abundant. Naghingapin, nagawas-awas. Sobra pa sa ordinaryo. Nilabaw pa sa ordinaryo. Mali ang grasya sa Diyos. O ba uli ang iyang ihatang din na ito? O tungod ni ini ng grasya sa Diyos na naghingapin, it makes us all sufficient. Nakapahimo din na itong mga sufficiency. And the word sufficient is from Greek word autarkeia, which means contentment. Ang grasya sa Diyos na naghingapin, the grace of God that abounds will make us content. Baka pa contento na ito. It is enough kung sa ego ni Pablo. Your grace is enough. Ego, ibong grasya. Kaya nga naman, naghisot na siya o pagkakontento sa provision sa ginoo. Nga ito niya. And I believe, enough po ng grasya sa Diyos hindi ka na ito na makuntinto kita ni Ine. Amen? It is all sufficient. The, the abundant grace of God is enough na makapahimok na ito na makuntinto. Now, nga nung sa paghatag, nga nung kinahanglan man ta, nga kuntinto ka, sa atong paghatag, in giving, why we need 
why this word contentment is important. Kaya nga naman, if you are not content in life, if you feel lacking something in your life, you will do everything to feel, to feel the lack of your life. Di ba? Kung naghuna-huna ka, o gibati ni mong adunay, kulang diha ka ni mo, maningkamot yun ta, nakapungkulang, mapunan, di rin ako. That's why, buhatang ay noon ko ba? Nagkulang pag alimis ang mga? Di ba? Kaya dili ka kontento. That's why, dili ka makahimo sa paghatag, kaya dili mga kontento. But if you are content in life, kung kontento ka sa kinabuhi, generosity will come. That's why you will give. Kaya nga naman, kontento mo ka sa kinabuhi. Imuha mang di recognize nga ang grasya sa Diyos, ego. That's why baka himo ka sa paghatag. Pero, di nit ganyan ka makakontento sa provision sa Diyos niya ni mo, then, di hanggang ang panahon magsigir ka kumkum sa inyong kamon. Kaya di nit na ni mo abdihan inyong kamon pagtabag sa mga tao na ni nangyahanglan. Di makakontento. Kulangan pa ganyan ni. Kuhaan na ito muna kung ihatag ninyo. Di ba? That's why the grace of God is sufficient. It is enough to make us content in life and in this we will be able to gain. And in where sa asa man ta mahimong contento, sa asa man ta mahimong sufficient eh. in all things. Let us always remember that the provision of God's grace is not limited to some things but is limitless in all things. Dili limitado ang provision sa Diyos. It is abundant. His glorious riches dato kayong Diyos. Lang si Pastor Ro. Kuhaan na yun ka ng prosperity gospel na yun eh. No. Mga isulti sa tulong sa Diyos. That God is rich. His grace is abounding. Naghingapin ang iyang grasya. It is not limited. That's why every now and then ang Diyos, makita nato ang Diyos nag-provide Diyos sa itong panginahanggan. We can, we all can testify that God is providing our needs daily. Yang example, why we need not to worry? Mga langgam, mga sagbot. If God is taking care of them, how much us nga iyahang mga anak iyahang nitagbog panan na itong panginahanulan sa panagdawad na ikaw pag naol and this is when kanos aman at all times sa panang panahon the grace of God is not bounded by time but is at work at all times. It is not bounded by time. Akaroon, kasihan ni ka. Ugma, di isa ka na kasihan. Dili. It is not bounded by time. Wala. Wala ang gilimitahan sa panahon na ang kasihan sa Diyos na atong madawat. Sa tanang panahon, naghingapin ang kasihan sa Diyos. Sa tanang panahon, gibubuan ka sa iyang lang panalangin. For the reason na nung gipanalanginan, na nung ang grasya sa Diyos, gibubuan niya na nila na ito na naghingapin man. Because in order for us to be a blessing, araw pa hibok ng panalangin, God bless us to be a blessing. 
Kung sa inyo niya sa verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Muli ang rasong nga nung di pa lang nanginan ta sa Diyos. Aaron, still the same. The word abound here is exceed in ordinary. Mula baw sa ordinaryo. Overflow. Mag-awas-awas. Mag-hingapin. Sa kung saan, sa maayo nga buhat. And of course, based sa ito ang context, this refers, and of course, not only limited, but based on our context, this refers to giving. The way we abound in every good work. Doon yung katuyuan, di manalanginan kita sa Diyos sa tanang butang o sa tanang panahon. Araw mo na gaya ka nato ang maayong buhat. So, it's clear that buhatan kita tumot kayo ihatagan kita sa Diyos. We give because God has given us. That's why I made a cycle of giving here. Naging kumok cycle sa paghatag. All grace abounds. Gibo po sa Diyos ang grasya diri nato. Then, this grace made us sufficient. Nakapahimong kini nga sufficient diri ka nato. Nakapahimong kini nga makuntinto ta sa iya ang grasya. And because we are sufficient, because we are content in life, because we are content sa grasya na bihatan sa Diyos diri ka nato, ni sangkop kini sa pagbuhat o mga maayong mabutang. And again, hatagan ko kita grasya sa Diyos. Di ba? Sa ito ang sa verse 6, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will, oh, will reap bountifully. So, it starts from the grace of God. O di dapat ni siya in order. Musukot yung nipil ni sa grasya sa Diyos. Di, kay nihatag ko, ni abound ang maayong buhat na ko, daswi ni grasya na ko. Di, di, kung di, 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 Gigrasyahan ka sa Diyos na kontento kita that's why nihatan kita. O kay kanunay man ang grasya sa Diyos disciple should not end. So, what's the big idea this morning? God has been pouring out His grace on us. Enough to be content in everything at all times. To have abundance in everything. Our giving starts from the grace of God. Dilit na makahimo sa paghatag kung walang itang ihatagan sa Diyos. Nagsugod kini sa iyang grasya. O ang iyang grasya ikaw sa atong mga adlaw-adlaw na panginahanglan. O di lang ikaw sa kini na makahibog kita sa paghatag sa uban na panginahanglan. O ang iyong panalangin wala na limitahan sa resources wala na limitahan sa gidaghanon o gigamyon kung dili limitless nga panalangin sa Diyos diri ka nato 
o wala usab kini gilimitahan sa panahon. Ang panalangin sa Diyos kanunay wala kini nakabase sa atong kapasidad, sa atong kaayo, kundi nakabase kini sa kapasidad sa kandato sa atong gino. And this is how we should be based sa pulong sa Diyos na disulti kanato karong kamuntado mayong bundag na kamuntado. The grace of God is surely enough sa ito Lord. And it is really abounding, not just enough, but really the difference is dili lang enough, may go, but abounding. So that's a good thing because the grace of God is abounding. It is, it is always sufficient for us. And so we might think that Usahin lang ta, pwede makadahin sa Diyos It's because sometimes we're not blessed Or sometimes God will take something from us But really, truly, God's grace is always abounding Always sufficient for us And so, we as God's people, God's children We will forever worship God Forever exalt His name And forever bless his name as we sing say to our souls bless the Lord our God his holy name every day, every morning and forever
you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. As I have said, the Holy Communion is part of the four activities of the early church in the book of Acts. People are gathering together in the temple courts and in the house to house. So um, every day they meet together in, in their houses, one house to the other. Every Sunday, in the first day of the week, they gather together in the temple courts. Sa may lang dihimo, pagkapok ilang dihimo as we look back on the book of Acts. The apostles teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and prayers. Malikitaw na ito, the cycle life of the church. So every time we meet together, be it in a daily, in a twice a week, and a weekly basis, we do the Holy Communion. For what? First, we need to recognize that there are two elements in this Holy Communion. The bread and the wine. And following verses after verse 26, Paul writes, So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without re recognizing or discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. We ought to examine ourselves. The question is, is this examination is for looking at the sin that is in us? The answer is no. Paul wanted the Corinthians to examine themselves because of the preceding verses. He can say, Babang na mga presikulo. That people in Corinth are coming together. Others are late. Others are early. Others coming in the middle of the service. It's also like in our services. So I, while I'm preaching here, and the pastor is preaching, others are still coming and sitting down. So they do not participate in our praise and worship. And others, after the service, after the sermon, when they gather together to perform the Holy Communion, they are not going together. They are not eating together and drinking together. And this put shame to the body of Christ. Therefore, Paul says, we need to examine ourselves. We need to come together as one body, eat together and drink together. Why? Because in the preceding verses, ang uban na humuk na, ang uban na busuk na, ang uban ni guto, ang uban ni uhaw. That is shameful in the body of Christ. Pananiyan si Paul, let us examine ourselves. We need to put it ourselves together in one accord and the reverence of partaking the Holy Communion. That is why the only requirements of partaking the Holy Communion is that if you have Christ in your heart. If indeed Christ is in your heart, you need to partake the Holy Communion. But if it's not, you need to open up your hearts and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. We need Christ in our heart. You need to be saved before you can partake the Holy Communion. Regardless of our status, if you are saved, if we commit sin or not, but we are saved, it does not affect the celebration of the Holy Communion. This means our standing before God, biblically, we are righteous and holy so that you are now qualified to partake the Holy Communion. Though we are living here on earth, our bodies, our souls still subject to sin, but it does not disqualify us or nullify us in partaking the Holy Communion. The more we need to draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God, if we have committed sin. What we need to do is to repent, confess our sin, repent, and go back to God. This means we need to, be, to do a big U-turn. Stop the sin and go back to God. This is how Paul reminded the Corinthians. 
Let us examine ourselves. If indeed we really recognize the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What for is the body of Christ? What for is the blood of Christ? If you understand this too, then we are ready to partake the Holy Communion. Ang lawas ni Cristo, na paglupas sa cross, giantos niya ang tanang mga kasakitan, just to show off the people that this is how the Father loved us, by not sparing His own sons, but by giving Jesus to us, to die on the cross. And because of the blood flowed out from the body of Jesus that causes His death, that blood washes away all our sins, past, present, and future. So we need to recognize that God has cleansed us and we are holy and righteous in His eyes. If you understand that, it will keep us from committing sin. If you are sinning right now, stop it and return to me. Let's bow our hands. Father God in heaven, we we'll come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, your Son. With the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for demonstrating to us, your Son, that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. And we remember, O Lord God, that Jesus Himself has instituted this Holy Communion so that every day, every time we partake the bread and the wine, we remember the death of Jesus on the cross. And we are obligated to preach the gospel, the message of the cross, which is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you, Father, that as we partake this Holy Communion right now, this church will not stop and no one can hinder us in preaching the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus, give me pray with us.
This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me.
to the only wise God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, be glory, honor, and power and might, now and forevermore. Amen. Oh. Pray lang ka na si Alma and Ruth 
ma-strengthen sila o magpadayo ng ilahang pagpagalagyan si Dino. And God will bless more Alma. No? Matikular siya sa uh, position niya karoon sa city government to ensure the sustainability or maybe niya ang future. Para pag-ampok man ang kanya nito. I don't know if there are other announcements for the young people. Chapter ko ng young people at one time o pagkong sa mong karo na hapon mo nag-stress patas sa mga mga pag-ito we need to relax and we need to look at ourselves first I know how painful it was maski ako galing but thank God na naka-deliver ka na sa atong services maski ako I thought that you could ka-deliver di ko ka-service yung ilang lang tanong sa emotions but the grace of God Overflows. We need to have hyper grace. If it is not hyper, it is not grace. Because grace has no boundaries and will overflow to the next. Thank you for coming and for blessing us.